know. What? It's recording, by the way. All right. Three. Oh, let me see four. Two. You, you don't have to count down. We can just, you know, listen to the audio and then decide where. Three. Two. I don't like that. One. Welcome to our podcast. It's new. <laughs> what who, is are, who are we? We are Sinister Potato. Sinister Potato. Oh, that's just, that's it? Why are we called Sinister Potato? I thought we had a, a bigger name. <laughs> bigger name doesn't make you better. <laughs> Sinister Potato Games here. Yeah. With our uh, inaugural podcast. Say your names. I'm Adam. I'm Kyle. I'm Don. That's good. They need to familiarize themselves with the voice. They're going to hear it a lot. There. <laughs> there. Trying to let the cat out of the room. Get the fuck out! The cat's out of the bag. Yeah. So uh, this will probably just be kind of like a gaming podcast, but kind of like a not gaming podcast. Stupid podcast. We'll start by talking about games, then we'll forget what we're doing. Everyone's going to hate it, so enjoy that. So, like to hate it. Yeah, I mean, if if you're stupid like we are, it's going to be great. Halo 4! Yeah. Yep. Halo 4 is a game. Halo. Coming out November 6th, mm-hmm. 2012. Is it 2012? Uh, it's got Master Chief. Master Vader. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. Get used to it. I think Halo's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> he kills aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> We were just uh, actually just looking at all the pre-order bonuses you get with it, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know how I feel about pre-order bonuses like that because there's like everywhere eight. Well, there's yeah, there's like eight or nine different companies that all have their own pre-order bonus. It's like one of them was like Gorilla Game or something. I've never <laughs> well, even heard of it. It's just the only problem I have is I like it when you get the pre-order bonus and it stays exclusive, so you can't get it by any other means. Yeah. But then I hate it for the fact that you go out of your way to get it from this one specific place, and then they release it later for DLC. Yeah. So that's the only problem that I have when they release it with multiple different websites. I mean, I love anything pre-order bonus, but you know, it just makes it that more difficult to decide what you want Yeah. in, in your final decision. Yeah, like the problem I have is like the pre-order bonus, Like if there's just one, like with uh, Borderlands 2... When you pre-order, you get the Mechromancer. Mm. Like, that's cool. You know, we get it for free. Everyone else buys it as DLC. Like, I'm cool with that. But because there's, like, eight or nine different things, it's like you either have to buy nine copies of the game or you don't get eight of the nine special things <laughs> or they release it later as DLC and you have to buy it. So it's like if there was just one thing, that's cool. You know, pre-order bonuses are awesome. But if mm. there's, like, nine different ones, it's yeah. the only feasible way you can get all of them is if they release them later. And then you're just paying extra money for weapon skins. This does really help diversify yourself in multiplayer because yeah. you, you know not everyone's going to have the same thing so you're all going to be a little different. Yeah. But like uh, uh, what was it? Pre-order bonus from GameStop from Bulletstorm. Everyone got the same two camouflages Yeah. and that's all you saw online. I mean, <laughs> all the eight people that played that game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. Well it's like with the um... Oh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Reach. When uh, when Reach came out, anyone that pre-ordered it with the, uh, I think the, just the Legendary Edition got flaming, like the flaming skull. Just if head. you bought the Legendary Edition, yeah. Yeah, so when the game started, there were like 10 million people <laughs> with flaming heads because no one had a million credits to buy Pestilence yet. No one had 300,000 credits to buy Heart Attack, so it was just like 30 million people in every game you play with has a flaming head and then everyone else is just, you know. A real limited edition right there, folks. <laughs> yeah. Just a bunch of ass faces. I don't know. I, I like limited editions a lot, but uh, then there's the issue of how limited should it be. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're going to pay 150 to $200 for something, you might want it to be kind of limited, but then they'll sell out in like a day. Then you're bound. Like the uh, bungee bag of swag. Yeah. <laughs> Was that like 32 <laughs> seconds? Yeah, they if crashed. That... Uh, when they tried to release it, crashed Amazon, and then they had to remake the selling page. And instead of just refreshing the old one, they just made a new category. So mm-hmm. uh, we're sitting there trying to buy it, you know, waiting for four hours that day, just clicking on the button, refresh, refresh, refresh. Then all of a sudden, Kyle says, Oh no, check the next page. There's a new bag of swag, and they're all gone <laughs> already. That was the most... At that point, it was an old bag of swag. 
It's a stanky bag. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy just the bag now on Bungie. That's not the point. I just, I just, I just want the Bungie bag. <laughs> if I just wanted the bag. Hey, what did you get? Just the bag! <laughs> I wouldn't have waited four hours in the day just to get a bag. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? So what else has been... Uh, what uh, what have you guys been playing lately? Uh, I'll, I just ran it off of uh, Gamefly, Fall of Cybertron, Transformers. Yeah, I got that yeah, too. You did too. Adam's just been watching. Watching uh, them play. <laughs> watching uh, <laughs> Just Hey, Adam, do you like it? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, the demo was really good. They had uh, just the, the coolest part of that game by far is just the seamless transition into vehicle oh, yeah. from robot forms. Like, oh crap, running, getting shot, trying to do a jet fly out a window, you know. Turn back into a dude, shoot some people, fly away. Turn back into a dude. Turd? What? Turd? I heard turd. Turd back into some corn, maybe. Turd burglar. Or would that be corn? No, that'd be corn back uh, into turd. You, you bought Dodge Siders too. How's that? <laughs> you said it funny. Really. Yeah, I know. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> the face is good. It's our first edit. Uh, anyway. No, I'm going to keep it in there. You bought Dark Siders too. I How did. How is it? It was fantastic. <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, it's it's hard. Uh, I I love it, but that's also because I really enjoyed the first one. But obviously, you know, anyone who may have not have liked the first one or the people that have the problem with Dark Siders saying that it just borrows too much from so many different games, uh, is probably just gonna go all hipster and I don't fucking like it. Well, you know what? That's okay. You don't have to like it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, not everyone's gonna like the same things. Uh, but I really enjoyed. You know, I like them both equally, uh, but I, I do like the big RPG aspect they, they put into number two. Uh, you know, the loot drops, uh, the, the skill trees, you know, but it's not it's not complicated. It's all very simple. It's only two skill trees, like necromancy and pretty much, you know, melee combat. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I found, that the game's fairly lengthy so far, like about 17 hours in so far. That's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of my times, uh, I've... I've, I've been doing side quests and stuff, uh, but so far about 17 hours in, I I still, I feel I have a lot more to go still. Is it, uh, is it open world? Like, do you go out and find people that give you quests, or is yeah. it kind of just straightforward? Uh, well, I mean, it's not, that there's just kind of people laying around that give you quests, but I mean, you can just go open world or fast travel throughout the, throughout the map. If you're lazy like me, you're like, oh, I love open world, I'm sick of fucking walking, then we just fast travel <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, it is, um... And I, I really enjoy it. I think it's, you know... How do you think it, it holds up to the the staple of number one? Like, does it... Do you think that they changed too much? Do you think that uh, this makes the first one look like no good now? I I think it's, like, right there with number one. Like, I feel that, uh, like, if, if you like the first one, then I, I don't see where you're not going to like number two. The, like, the only difference is, like, the combat, everything that you, that you would have liked or loved about the first game is still all here, just, you know, added content, you know, on the RPG aspects. And, that you know, one of the things I like a lot more is it seems that, uh, you know, if you don't want to just do the main storyline, that you have a lot more things to work on, like collecting pages from the Book of the Dead. Oh, God. If you get ten... Well, it's not that. Is like when you get the key to these special tombs, which I I collected and I got the key, but I didn't go to the tombs yet. But they're supposed to give you uh, special items or whatever. There's only like I, th- I think three or four, so like you know thirty or forty pages. Oh, so uh, it's kind of like those uh, assassin tombs from Assassin's Creed where you go and yeah. collect all the. But I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Those I, I keep bitch. Yeah, I keep forgetting to go in there and check those, but uh, you know stuff like that. I think <laughs> it's good wow. to keep. It's good to keep the interest. <laughs> Hitting the base there. Yeah. Um, so, I heard about these really cool things called C-strings. Oh, God, no. See, I've heard of, like, a G-string. I've heard, uh, what other strings are there? I don't know. So, uh, yeah, five minutes of gaming, and then... (laughs) Talking about C-strings. Smut! Um, it's apparently, Google this at your own risk, uh, there is male and female versions of this, uh... Potential explicit content. This illustrious, um, undergarment. Uh, apparently, <laughs> it is a cup that goes over the main part of your genitalia, and then goes back under the gooch taint vagina region, and then right up your ass crack with a metal pole. 
So, <laughs> well, it's like a little bendable. Like no, no, thing. just it just goes right in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking plug. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Keep it classy. Anyway, so uh, I don't know how you could this. You know, this is sort of going like uh, no panty lines, no nothing like that. But yeah, it, I think it's gonna have like a metal bar line, yeah. a, a bit of a bump coming out your butt. <laughs> I mean, they, they tell you that, you know, it's, it's you know, no strings or, or whatever, and there's supposed to be, like, one of those, you know, flexible, like, metal wiring. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for breaking that. <laughs> uh, the doorstop. <laughs> the little metal wiring that's supposed to go on the back of, the like, the little ass piece that, uh, but I just wonder, because I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just curious how it's supposed to hold up. I mean, like, is it? Do you just clamp it on your your fucking your the you in your body, or like if you spread your cheeks too much, if you gotta drop down and pick something up, it's just gonna fall out and just be flapping in the wind. That'd be kind of funny, you know, like a girl wearing a skirt. You know, she think you think she's pretty cute, whatever. You know, you're dancing around, you're having fun. She bends over a little bit and clunk on the floor it comes down a C string. You're like, hey, she's, where did you have that? She just she's like wearing a skirt. It just falls out like a fucking retainer. <laughs> oh no, I lost my C-string. <laughs> Fixed it. Good. Oh. Um, I actually had another question about Halo 4. Mm. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of people that are kind of complaining that it looks a lot like uh, Call of Duty. Like yeah. they're trying to, you know, change it over. There's loadouts now and they have the uh, those, well, not care packages, but the uh, orbital oh, drop yeah, for the drop. weapons yeah. and all that. Uh, but uh, Kyle, you were... You had a, not a theory, but an idea of why it's different, like all the different weapons and all that. Well, this is to just, um, because 343, they want to make this their own baby. That's why they changed the look of things. That's why Master Chief's armor actually looks functional, as opposed (laughs) to (laughs) the door is haunted. It's just going on its own. Close the door. I think, is that the cat, Adam? (laughs) Yeah, that's the cat. (laughs) There you go. All right. <laughs> Second edit. <laughs> Start the question again. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that are looking at uh, Halo 4, and they're kind of comparing it to Call of Duty. Like, they've got the uh, they've got loadouts now. They've got the not weapon, not care packages, like weapon drops, whatever those are. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Kyle, you were saying something. It's, uh, it's more of a way to... Something about the weapons in the universe or something? Right. Uh, 343, they're trying to make this their own baby and stuff. You know, like, that's why uh, Master Chief's armor looks different. That's why all the tech looks just slightly different. You know, it looks more practical. Uh, I saw that kind of as Bungie did uh, the classic sci-fi, more fiction. Like, it works. We don't know how, but it works. And 343 is really looking at the science aspect of it and seeing what's practical, what's not practical, making it work, making it look... As if this is what will, will be. Yeah. Um, and also the the borrowing of things. I see that as just the evolution of gaming. I mean, when Gears of War brought back horde mode, yeah. Sur- yeah. just classic mm-hmm. survival mode. Everyone <laughs> said, "Wow, this is fantastic," and everyone jumped on. I mean, there was survival in Modern Warfare Three. There was all the only multiplayer for Boltstorm was survival. They brought back, f- they, not brought back. They made firefight. They made all these different survival games just because Gears of War brought one little thing back and it became popular. Oh, yeah. So, this gives more control to the player. You know, you can't really look at it as well Call of Duty did that first. It, and, uh, it, you know, it makes it so they can in- introduce all of the weapons from the canon prior to. Mm-hmm. So, you don't have redundancies anymore. Uh, well, at least they're acceptable redundancies. You know, yeah. the carbine, the DMR, and the battle rifle, I mean, they're all the same thing. But now they're just a little different, and you can choose one yeah. based off of how far you played the game, and and uh, it's I, I think it's better. You know, it's gonna make it a lot more fresh. Yeah, and new. looking at all the, they've got a bunch of uh, gameplay from what would it, like pro Halo players and all MLG. that. MLG. Yeah. Uh, but it's like you look at it and it doesn't it doesn't look like Call of Duty. You know, no. they still have the Halo gravity. You know, you jump, yep. you go this far. Still you know, plays like Halo. <laughs> And even though you can sprint, I mean that's just that's been coming anyway. It's mm-hmm. like seriously, why why couldn't you sprint before? Is more of a well, good question. Well, my thing is, I I want the ability to sprint without having that be my ability. Yeah, it's like I'd rather be able to sprint and then go into armor lock, or you know, sprint and then use a jetpack. It's not like yeah. sprint. 
it's kind of a weird armor ability and reach, you know, mm. the ability to sprint really doesn't come from your armor, I don't think. You need this little key <laughs> in your butt that makes it so your legs can move faster than walking. Yeah, but it's just like adding the stuff in, I think, is going to be better for them because they're going to get all the, or not all of the Call of Duty players, but a lot of them are going to look at it and yeah. be like, oh yeah, I recognize this. They're not just going to look over it and be like, oh, it's not Call of Duty. It's not hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Of course, this is just still going to be those people anyway, you know. Yep. Well, send your message 1v1, hang them high pistols only. Yeah, pistols. Smoke you. <laughs> but, well, I mean, I also had that problem. I mean, when I was looking at a lot of the things that they were doing at first, just hearing about it, you know, I was really skeptical, and I was like, uh, you know, they are Call of duty the shit out of this. And then I saw all the gameplay footage and uh, what they had and, like, all the, and the stuff that they released, like, the weapons trail and everything. Yeah. And you're like, holy <laughs> shit, this is actually really fucking yeah. awesome. Mm. And I got really, really excited for it. And, like I said, it because, uh, you, you know, you and I, Kyle, have discussed it. And, like, we discussed it, like, all night about how it puts, a, like, a lot of the good stuff about Call of Duty that's not, you know, the hardcore shooter. Like, just some of the neat things, like weapon loadouts and... Like, I just think, I don't know why, just me personally, like, when you kill people and you get the, the little point systems that come up, like, you know, you know, get a kill, 100 plus points. Right. Like, yeah, I, I kind of like that. Like, stuff like that. that. That gives it, you know, the the modern shooter feel, uh, but it's still so very much Halo. You know, yeah. it's just, it's the good, it's all the good stuff that you could take and, and put it with Halo. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and I'm just very excited to play it. Yeah. And plus with the uh, the story, too. Uh, there's a lot of books that go along with the Halo universe. That was nice. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of them came out, like, during the creation of 1, 2, and 3, all that. They have a book that is, uh, about the fall of Reach, but it goes with Master Chief and not Noble Squad and all that. Yeah. Uh, there's also some new books that are coming out that are talking a lot about the Forerunners, and I think that's gonna play in a lot with, uh, Halo 4 and 5 and 6, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. By Greg Bear. Greg Bear. Hugo and what's the other? Nebula Award. Yeah, multi award. Great books. Pick them up. Oh yeah, fantastic. And it might help you understand what's going on in the uh, Halo Four trailers and all that. And almost as I I would from what I understand because the the Halo universe the books jump around all the time like uh, the Cold Protocol somewhere between two and three you know just a little bit before you know um, uh, the the uh, books by Karen Travis. Uh, Ghost of Onyx. I think she wrote that one. But anyway, she's writing... Uh, the sequel to that was... Glasslands. Glasslands, yes. And then after that, there is the Thursday, Thursday War. War. So those are almost prequels to uh, Halo 4. They they involve Infinity in some way. I think they mentioned it in Glasslands. And I think that they actually talk about it in the Thursday War. And uh, that also makes me think of, of the Spec Ops mode for Halo 4. Is... Uh, is actually, you know, uh, Spec Ops. No, it's Spartan Ops. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right, Call of Duty. Uh-oh. Spec Ops the line, you know. Uh, <laughs> 1v1. I, I guess the whole multiplayer is a hollow room. This is the story behind it. You're training your Spartan, who is uh, a Spartan 4. And, you know, you're just training, you're fighting, you're sparring. And then the Spartan Ops is you actually going out and doing these missions that the, uh, the, the Infinity uh, runs into. And there'll be cutscenes and stuff with that. Not to mention the uh, the whole live action vidoc kind oh, of thing that's going yeah. along with it. I don't, I don't know how much how much of that's been released so far. I mean, they had the uh, E three was it the that seamless cut between the uh, live action Infinity finding the world and then yeah. Yeah. it's crashing through the uh, atmosphere. Then all of a sudden it switches over to gameplay, just blowing your mind. Yeah, you know? cool. maybe that was just like the finale because this is supposed to be right yep. up until yeah Halo four all the way Halo four. I'm really excited. <laughs> just want to say. If you couldn't tell by the 15 minutes we just spent talking about it, it's going to be good. Very good. So, Slender. Slender. <laughs> is, it, is that even done downloading yet? No. Uh, <clears throat> as a group, we have yet to play it. Um, me, uh, I watched because I am a bit of a chicken. Uh, but Adam, I believe, had the mouse one time. Yeah. Uh, no, I played that one fully. That was all me, keyboard and mouse, you know. That was? Yeah, SCP yeah, was the split one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, we're not going to be talking about that one. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool how popular Slender has gotten. Uh, there's another game called SCP-087. It's like the Endless Staircase, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's kind of cool that these horror games have gotten popular because they're they're super indie 
kind of games, you know, people doing them for school projects and all that. But it really shows, like, like even if, like, us, you know, sitting here, we could just be like, what if we wanted to make a game? And then you go online, you do it, and then all of a sudden someone finds it, and it gets super popular. Yeah. You know, it's kind of it's kind of cool that someone that's played video games all their life can, like, maybe make one and then, you know, get into the industry that, that way. The indie developer is the, the future of gaming. As yeah. it were, that's back when, like, back before video games were super duper popular like uh half the the original crew of bungie like they did this on the side or something like that and people just made mods for things and like valve just picked someone up yep. and did a mod oh uh the guy who did DayZ was just picked up by the developers of arma yep um so the indie developer really is the future um i suppose well it's just that with you know the the gaming industry hasn't even been around that long you know like, mm. what, 20, 25? 30, yeah, yeah like, you're close Mark, to 30. I don't know what the first um, Mr. Game & Watch, maybe, was that the yeah, first some, game? Something, you know, all the way back to, what, the Atari. Pong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pong. Pong. I guess Pong would be the first video game. But, really. but, I mean, even though it hasn't been around for that long, it's really hard to just have a consistent amount of original ideas mm. all of the time, especially when you have all these big blockbuster hits that, you know, sell millions of copies, you know, your Gears of War, Call of Duty, you know, Halo, you know. Uh, some of you know not always you know based off a of story but just becoming so big um you know multiplayer single player otherwise it's just one of those it's it's always hard just to take the same game and just you know add on to it you know it's not yeah. even changing what the game is it's just adding on adding on adding on people start to go you know i love it but it's just the same thing mm. and i just think with the outsider perspective you know if, you know just your everyday people that play video games they always go hey i think this would be a great idea but there is no say. There is no. Have no let voice. me call this company yeah. and tell them what yeah. I have to say. And they're oh wow, yeah, <laughs> we got a badass over Good here. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> As they write it down. And they're like, hey, I have an interesting idea. Can you listen to this click? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just. I think it's you know even if it's not something that looks great or you know your HD you know your awesome games yep. it's just one of those the idea and the fact that people like it and then if somebody actually like it, they said these people these indie developers getting hired by these big game developers uh then can take that you know that idea and then make it something and people will go wow this looked like this and now it's going to be something huge and now i'm really excited yeah. but i mean it doesn't even have to look good i mean uh, look at minecraft it was based <laughs> off of pixels you know, yeah <laughs> You know, something something that simple has become a worldwide phenomenon yeah. in, in gaming. Something that's so simple. I mean, just give the people what they want, let them do it, and mm. it's it's just that easy. I mean, well, it's not easy, but uh, just... The idea is that simple. Yeah, it's giving people a chance to put the, their foot in the door and let them, uh, you know, break the mold and, and make what they want. But uh, Slender specifically... Uh, it's kind of an interesting game in the fact that there's almost nothing in it. <laughs> you know, it's like you're in a forest, um, there's trees, uh, there's like a, there's a truck and <laughs> a bathroom. bathroom. Some rocks. You know, some rocks, yeah. some tanks, all Fence. that kind of stuff. But the, uh, half the time you don't even see them. There'll be like a piano, like a piano chord, someone just slams on it and then you freak out because horror games, I think the best way of like making Anything the... Horror. Yeah, anything horrid, the best way to make someone scared is to make them do all the work. Yeah. Like, uh, that... Amnesia is a really good example of that. Like, you play probably 45 minutes an hour into that game and you never see a monster, but you're still scared out of your mind because you're going yeah, through... Yeah, when's it, when's it going to happen? Yeah, because the first... Like, and it escalates in such a perfect way that you never get desensitized to the horror because it's like, I played that game uh, fully through in the dark, you know, no headphones, but... Like, volume all the way up, in the dark, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, you start the game, and you're just in this place. And you're walking through, and a door blows open. And you're just like, oh god, this is it, this is the end. And you're like, oh wait, it was just a door opening. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, the light's flickering, this is gonna be the end. And you're like, no, no, that's not it. And you're finally going through, and then you walk into this huge hallway, and you look down the other end, and you see a foot go through the door. And you're like, oh god, this is the end. And then you never see it. <laughs> and so you keep going, and then every time something hor horrifying happens the next thing that happens is always worse, but it's always because you're, in your head, you're like, oh god, I'm gonna die. Like, oh god, I gotta right hide. Behind I gotta me. hide. And the worst part is when uh, the game wants you to hide. Like, you can't fight. There's no, there's, like, you can't pick anything up. You have no weapons, any of that. So it's like, you either have to run, and a lot of the times you can't do that because you're in a room, and the only door is where he's coming from. 
So you have to get in a closet, and just the suspense. Like, nothing's happening. You hear footsteps, you hear, like, growling. And then, all of a sudden, you're either safe, or the door busts open and you die. And you never even see the monster. You just see, like, an arm punch you in the head and you die. (laughs) That's just the most horrifying thing. It's just, like... You're in a closet and you're just like, oh god, I'm powerless. <laughs> I'm completely powerless to do anything against this and I'm gonna die. And the same thing kind of happens with Slender. You know, you're walking around, you can sprint, but you go like 2% faster than you normally do. <laughs> Your flashlight dies after, you know, 15 minutes, so you better finish the game fast or you're just in the dark. And then you're like, oh, I think I hear footsteps behind me. Nothing's there. Turn back around. There he is and you're dead. Yeah. It's that kind of thing where nothing really happens in the game, but you're just frightened the whole time. It's I think that that horror really, uh, really speaks to the 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 consumer. I suppose you know, to go with movies and everything to make you do the work. Um, really impacts a lot harder than just pure shock. Oh yeah, and just jump out. You know, kind of like like Left 4 Dead is scary in the fact that oh my god, a hunter just jumped out of like. You know, that truck and just ate my face or something, you know. Uh, Charger just jumped off the roof, you know. That's that's jumpy, but, like, the horror horror really is just, like, getting into your into your mind and making... Yeah. Like, after you after you play Left 4 Dead, you're not scared. No. You know, after you watch a... When you watch a crappy horror movie, the only thing that scares you is when something, like, busts out of a wall and you're just like, <laughs> oh, God, that thing just happened, you know. Kool-Aid. It's just... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's, that's not really, that's not scary. It just, like, jumps you. Yeah. You know, graphic images, you know, horrifying things, someone's face, like, melting off as a curse or something, you Chilling know. off your foot. You, you need something that's going to imprint itself yeah. in your psyche. So you're like, wow, I just watched that, and now I have to go in the basement and do fucking laundry. <laughs> you're like, that's exactly where they just died, in the basement doing fucking laundry. <laughs> just things, like, uh, that, that really ground themselves, like, I don't know, when I was a kid, uh, the kid... Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I was an early adolescent, um, <laughs> the ring came out, and it, I never, I never watched it because I could never bring myself to it. But I mean, it, you know, nowadays, yeah, I could, I could watch it, and it's not very scary. But then it was, uh, it was like, okay, uh, you watch this tape. No one knows what you know. How would you know if you're gonna watch something that's gonna give you a curse and kill you? But like your TV, everyone has a TV in their whole house. Yeah. Everywhere. I, I have. I've got one, two, three, back. four, five. I've got five TVs in my house. Especially back when it was standard definition television. Right, and the, the, uh, I think that's what well, that, yeah, it's talking. Yeah, that's what it's talking to it. Um, uh, but yeah, just it's something that really grounds it in your life. Um, and the TV was really, really a, a, a relatable experience. Right. Yeah. You know. um, yeah. Like Slender and Amnesia. Uh, yeah, what's even worse for Slender for us is, you know, we're in northern Maine. You woods. go outside and there's just trees everywhere. And you're like, oh God. I just saw this. Oh, there's a truck. Oh, God, there's a truck in the game. And then you run back inside. Oh, my God, there's a note on this tree. <laughs> oh, it's just a grocery list. <laughs> yeah. hey, there's blood on the bag. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then you die. Uh, and that's the last time we saw Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Three men went missing in the Northern Lake Woods. Yeah. And we found a kitten. Yay. Happy <laughs> news story of the day. <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna do. We were playing chess, <laughs> we were playing chess on the on the iPad just just a little bit early before we started this. Uh, and, and how how is your game going? How, how did uh, that poorly. go? Poorly. Um, I'm not really that good at chess. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I've played. You know, I know what the pieces do and you know, all that. Difficulties on medium, which in chess means impossible. <laughs> but uh, I'm playing. Don sitting across the room, and every time you get in the check, the computer just goes check. And I'm playing, I'm playing, like, I get, every time I get put in check, I move my king, put me in check again, so he's going to check, check. And Don looks over me and said, is the iPad saying shit? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It I, wasn't. I was, sadly. I did, I was, I, like, I just, like, there's no way he's saying shit. But at first I thought it was you saying shit, like, I thought you were mad, because it was just, like, such a low, shit, shit. And I thought you were just really angry, I was like, what? What is that? You're like saying check. I go, oh check. <laughs> I thought he was saying shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then just all, just not even all day. Just, I mean, I it was ever since it came out, and I was introduced to the video, uh, and then you just were starting to get into it. The, the, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Opa Gangnam style. Oh <laughs> god, yeah. 
and it's just the most addicting video ever. It's just Can the, you spell that? Yeah. O P P A. Okay. G A N G N A M. Style. Style. Stole. Okay. S T I A L. And what else is it? It's a music video about Korean. What? Koreans. That's it. That's all it's about. That's all you need to know. It's all just right. about made made by a guy named Psy. P was it P S Y. Which I guess is, you know, for him he said it was short for psycho and all that jazz. And, you know, the, the I guess the, the story behind the Opa Gangnam style is it's kind of like the, the Beverly Hills. That's one of those, it's supposed to be the, the life of the rich and the famous or, or, you know, something like that, along the lines like that, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. It's probably pretty easy to miss seeing as the music video was just him, you know, screaming at <laughs> the girl's asses and like dancing like he's riding a Cowboy. horse. Yeah, yeah. It's just the most rant. Like you, you should watch it. Like just if if you want something, there's like I know something's gonna be funny. Just just a goofy like music video with a bunch of funny Asian people. You're like, this is the one for me. <laughs> if you're and, not one of the 54 million people that's already watched <laughs> it, that is. Yeah. If you but, want something that's gonna be stuck in your head for if, about if you, 28 days. If you want to <laughs> if you want to dance like you're riding a horse, then sign up, people. That is the video for you. This is the tutorial <laughs> to the next step of your life. <laughs> there is something I have to say about that though, and this happens a lot. It's just friggin' J-pop and K-pop. They always put English phrases in their songs and just, it just, no one cares. It's like, if I'm sitting here and all of a sudden I just, like, throw a Japanese phrase and everyone's gonna look at me like I'm freaking crazy. Yeah, but, like, you're in that song, it's just fucking like, stupid America. You know, just Korean, like, Korean lyrics and all of a sudden they say, hey, sexy lady. And I'm just like, wait a minute, that, those are English words. <laughs> what? And that's just acceptable in that, in that kind of music. And I don't know. I find it really weird that they can just, you know put English phrases in and it's just like yeah that's totally cool and then we're like uh I only understood three words in that song <laughs> Sinister Potato Games slightly less racist <laughs> <laughs> no but really it will get bad at some point <laughs> alright so so what else what were we really doing today oh uh, well, it was the water yep. yeah water's a bitch <laughs> water's a thing that happened today physics apply to water Gar garden hoses was the natural enemy of of, yeah. of the day from yeah. from your how deep is your well? Uh, who knows? From your well about eight thousand feet underneath let the me, house. <laughs> let me throw a little Timmy in there, and then I'll have Lassie come pick him up after. <laughs> what's what's the matter, little Timmy? So oh, I don't know. I think it's in well? I think it's frozen solid from your Arctic <laughs> bath. <laughs> so if you don't, if anyone listening, if you don't know, uh, Northern Maine isn't really a warm place. Um, we get we get a lot of snow. Um, I think the most record-breaking snowfall we had recently was 212 inches in one in yeah. one winter. One, yeah, one. Yeah. So needless to say, the summers don't really get very warm. But today was probably I'd say 88, yeah, 89 yeah. with humidity. And I woke up and I was pretty much dead. I rolled out of bed <laughs> and I had to go sit in front of my fan for like five minutes. Not quite, but pretty much dead. Yeah. So we're uh, we went out swimming and. Uh, Water was probably 80. Yeah, really was, refreshing. Yeah, it was actually then, really warm. And then Don goes out and gets his garden hose <laughs> and uh, starts spraying us. It's probably, what, 55 degree water? Oh, it was, it was cold. Frozen. Negative 12 <laughs> degree water. <laughs> Zero degrees Kelvin. <laughs> no molecular movement at all. Um, <laughs> so then we'll just stop in the house. <laughs> <laughs> what? You blew my mind. Oh, hey, I got this great story. Um, I didn't tell you guys this. Oh, um, man. When was it? When was it? When Is was it, it with water? Friday night, I delivered pizza uh, to this hotel in Caribou, which is our neighboring town. So you don't know. If you don't know, then Kyle works at a pizza place. Yeah. If you couldn't establish that on your own, intelligent viewer. <laughs> it's fantastic. So moving on to the story. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Um, <laughs> so... I, I we get this call. We we stop delivering at ten thirty. We close at eleven, and we get a call at like ten twenty two. <laughs> was and it me? No, it was not you. Not you yet. From Caribou. Sometimes. No. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, she's like, "Yeah, I usually live at the apartments right behind the store, so I would come down and get it, but I'm staying at the hotel across town for the night." Okay. Uh, so we take the order. I run it out there, and I'm in the lobby, and usually there's always this just un believably rage inducingly happy woman behind the counter she's just always smiling makes me want to throw something at her like a pizza uh, <laughs> like a pizza <laughs> yeah um so she's just not there 
So there's this huge bell, like probably the size of a saucer, and just I'm afraid to ring it because it's it's late at night, and uh, so I'm just constantly like hovering over it, and you know, and then I'm like, oh, someone's gonna walk in and be like, hovering my hand over your bell. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ring it, I promise. <laughs> and so I I finally work up the oh yeah the whole time that I've been doing this I hear this whistling in the back like someone's like <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like what is the because there's an office back there, and just, just stop whistling and listen to my footsteps on the floor. You know, I'm trying to be subtle and let you know I'm here. And I opened the door, you know, heftily and closed it heftily. So it went thud, thud. And so anyway, so I just finally get pissed off and just ring that fucker as loud as I can. It's bing, and she comes around back, just looks just dazed, uh, no smile, and uh, then she to- calls down to the room. Person comes up. The order was like thirty two fifty six, if I recall. And she comes down and she's like, How much is it? I'm like, thirty two fifty six. She's like, I've only got twenty two. I'm like, Well, I need thirty two fifty six. And she's not dressed to like the caliber of uh an, you know, an average person. She sort of looks like a woman of the night. <laughs> and she's staying at the oh. hotel. So she might have been working at the hotel. Uh. Yeah. And so she she's like, uh, I've only got twenty two. <clears throat> you know, how can we make up the difference? You can pay me. And I'm like, Do you have more money back in your room? No, I'm just stone faced. Because <laughs> I can smell the alcohol, the abuse, and Pref- the cigarettes on her breath. Preferably clean money. <laughs> <laughs> Give that, me gloves. That's that I, I hate it when, when you go up to a door and you're like, okay, there's a total. And they just, they like fucking unhinge their bra and they haul out like sweaty dollars. And I'm like, oh, sweaty boobs. <laughs> Gross. I love boobs, by the way, but not sweaty ones. <laughs> not sweaty ones. Well, at least sweaty boobs on unattractive people. So nonetheless, uh, I had to wait like another 10 to 15 minutes for her to go back to her room and come back with the money. And my boss, because this is my last week, she thought that I probably had, like, run away with the money I got. She was going to, like, call me. Call there was the so much of it. She was gonna, yeah, all, like... 3256. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah. Uh, that's, that's to recap my... You know, that's, that's, like, the little cherry on top of my pizza delivery Sunday there. <laughs> so, like, when you ring the bell, did she come around, like, all hunchback? It's like, yes, man. <laughs> no, no, it was just like Please a... Please enter through the back. <laughs> it was like a... <laughs> like a bing and she just like sort of hobbles around she looks like she was asleep or something <laughs> no nope, not that kind of hobble <laughs> she and was hobbling a dick on the way over <laughs> almost done <laughs> I need to take care of bridges <laughs> oh god <laughs> so water <laughs> right that's what we're okay how about, about we just okay what happened long story short uh we took the hose and a little attachable head thing where you you know you spray you squeeze it, it and you and squeeze the head <laughs> squeeze the head. Squeeze Stuff comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Spray yeah. on face, you know. Obviously, long story short, concentrated water equals pain. Had a fun day with that. Yeah, who knows? Uh, yeah. Who knew this, uh, that uh, they cut steel with pressurized water? I, I did know that. Yeah, so, like, our lips didn't stand a chance. Our <laughs> eyeballs didn't stand a chance. Our ears. Well, did they say, like, pressurized water can cut through anything, including diamond? I don't know about diamond. I'm pretty sure think, it, like, it could do a good job. Something. Well, actually, Diamond didn't know. It's like, it can pretty much cut through anything, but if you hit it at the wrong angle, it just shatters. Well, isn't that just the way that it's all set up and it's crystal clean structure? So yeah. if you hit it on just like the right point. So, I mean, I suppose you could cut it with water because, I mean, it's pretty easy that you could actually break it down. But that would, be a, that would be a different kind of thing. Uh, yeah, this I guess is it's like, not this is it, like it's a, breaking this it. This is like a pushing, you know, as opposed to like a, you know, kinetic attack. <laughs> Sinister well, Potato Game Science Kenshi from Mortal Kombat Kinetic Throw uh, It wasn't even really like was. Blunt force Or <laughs> just hitting it It was a kinetic attack Thank you very much It was Mass <laughs> Effect <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sound effects by Donald Frank And then Well they, A couple things In the news recently uh, oh, some, yeah. some slurgly deaths um, no, no, Obviously notably uh, Neil Armstrong. Rest you, in peace. Yeah, first mm-hmm. was the first person to land on the moon. Yep. Took a step on walk on the moon. First oh, man to walk on the moon. Allegedly walk on the moon. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mythbusters proved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm all, I'm all about my, you know, my crazy theories. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that. Um, you know, Neil Armstrong died. That's very sad news. Eighty-two years. Yep. I guess he died from complications due to a heart surgery he had earlier <clears throat> this month. Yep. Yeah. And. Uh, 
for those of you whose childhoods don't want to be ruined or just love Sesame Street, rate the death, uh, the Count died. The person that does the voice of the Count, uh, I apologize for not remembering his name. Yeah. Um, he, I believe they said he was 72 uh, when, when he died. And uh, I, th- I thought that was really, it's not that it was disappointing. No, I'm just disappointed that he died. <laughs> he should have stuck around for it. <laughs> Shut the hell on.